Hi everyone, I'm Brian, this is Above Board. I know it's been a while since I've done an episode, so let's just call this season two, shall we? I'm lucky enough here to have Waterdeep Dungeons of the Mad Mage, the board game by Wizards of the Coast, and as you can see, this is a premium edition. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the premium edition means that it has all pre-painted miniatures. Uh, normally these boxes only come with standard unpainted miniatures. So for me, I can paint minis, but I prefer not to. Um, so this saves me a lot of trouble. Um, so I thought we'd do an unboxing and see what's inside. So let's have a look. Okay, so here it is. Uh, we've taken the shiny plastic wrap off and let's have a look what's inside. Okay, so on top we have all the documentation. Um, I'll try not to get any glare on this. Here's our first packet of minis. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unwrap these and lay them out and do some close-ups properly uh, after this is done. Uh, but just to give you an indication of what we see here, looks like these are the, these are the slards. I oh, find flying sword, sorry. Yeah, I thought they were slards for a second. And grungs and an intellect devourer. Excellent. I've been wanting one of those. So uh, there's a, a brief look at some of them, uh, but like I said, we'll lay these out and we'll get a proper look at them shortly. Four or five intellect of ours there, six and three flying swords. Very good. And these are probably the larger minis. A Trobriand. He looks pretty cool. Firing some sort of fireball. And this good guy is the Muriel. It's pronounced Muriel. It doesn't look like a Muriel to me. Swords of a bent. More like a Diane than a Muriel, but oh well. Maybe a Karen. They're usually problem makers, aren't they? Right, next we have veterans. Why a veteran? Uh, thug leader. And his merry band of thugs. Which there are three, and it looks like there are two more veterans. So three veterans all together. Okay. Here we have uh, yes, oh, another veteran leader. So it's two veteran leaders. Yep. Okay, two different coloured veteran leaders, but lots of things. And we have two shadows, or three shadows. And three bear hags. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Behir hag. I have to look that up. Hags, basically. Uh, next. Looks like this, these are the heroes, or some of the arch villain types. Well, that's very good, nice. Uh, yep, the hero of the piece, or well, anti hero, I should say. The villain, uh, Halister Black Cloak. I don't know if he's going to show up very well there, but that is a really cool looking mini. I love the magic swords spell that he's casting. So put him front and center down there. Uh, here we have uh, Arcturia. I'm not all sure what race or species she's supposed to be, but she looks like some sort of fae with those awesome wings. And we have, oh dear, looks like this guy's fallen off his stand. This is 
Zalathar Shadow Dusk. So we'll just pop him back in. We'll glue him back in later. Yeah, he's right. There we go. And it's like his brother Desmere Shadow Dusk. And a grey ooze. Which actually, you know, for a grey ooze it's actually a pretty cool mini. so people can have a look at that while I'm unboxing Alright, next pack These are the beholders Okay, this is a zombie, uh, beholder zombie Really cool looking mini actually and actually I have to say a really nice paint job I'm quite impressed, a lot of these minis often look like sort of a lazy attempt at painting but and he looks really cool. And we have his brother or sister or cousin or maybe himself that he dreamed into existence according to Beholder Law. So, yep. And the Death Tyrant, which I guess is basically some sort of lich or undead Beholder. So he doesn't even have the eye stalks, just his eyes float around him in this sort of mystical field. And that looks really cool too. His, his eye is actually translucent. I don't know if that's really showing up there. It's made of the same plastic as the, as, as well, I'll call it as fin or collar. So yeah, really nice paint job. Really looks like bone, like a skull. Yeah, probably one of my favorites in this particular pack. So I've got a few more here. Uh, we'll do the heroes last, I think. Alright, this is the biggest one here. This is the Skeladar. The Skelada. Skelada. Uh, it looks like a giant uh, mechanical scorpion with lightning shooting out of its tail, or basically just any adventurer's nightmare. And he's looks he's a big and imposing and really quite neat as well. Quite a nice paint job on him. Okay, so then we come to the heroes. Ah, and another one's fallen off his base. A little unimpressed, Wizards of the Coast. Quality control. This thing wasn't cheap. Let's see if we can get him back on so he can at least stand up proudly while I'm showing what he can do. Maybe not. He's going to be a bit stubborn. Well, anyway, this one is Tiefling Battlemaster. Him down as gently as I can so that he doesn't fall off. There we go. I'm gonna to have to glue him as well. Uh, the next one we have is the Elf Cleric of the Grave. Hold him up a little bit so you can see him. Very cool. Again, quite another nice paint job. Um, again, I don't know if you can see that very well, but the details in his face are actually quite good. As I said, I'll be giving you close-ups of these shortly. Uh, the next one is the Human Paladin of the Oath of Vengeance. It's quite a mouthful. Yeah, there's a, f a female paladin by the looks of things. So yeah, quite a nice swooping... It looks like an almost semi-transparent purple cloak, the way the light's coming through there. Um, yeah, very cool. And this guy is the Human Storm Sorcerer. And he's casting a spell there. He actually looks like he, he's sort of any old Joe, really. He just casts spells. But I quite like that outfit. It's not too over the top. You know, regular people can cast magic too, I suppose. And he, being a sorcerer, he wouldn't have necessarily attended any magic schools. Ah. Uh, now, this one I like. And I think it may replace my Death Tyrant as my favourite mini. The Gnome Inquisitive. Now, he doesn't look like much, but when you look at him really closely, you can see he's got a little translucent magnifying glass there, which I can see on this side of the light is shining right through. And that just looks really neat. I like his hat, I like his, I guess his truncheon or stick. Uh, but particularly that magnifying glass adds a lot of character to this particular miniature, and I think that's a really neat touch. 
So there we go. All right, now we move on, I guess, to the more boring stuff. The dice, 20 sided, I think we've all seen those before, but in the interest of completion, I'll pop it out and we'll see what we roll. How's this game gonna go for me? 15, not too bad, we'll keep it there. Uh, I'm not gonna open all of these right now, but here we have the cards, adventure cards, the powers for the various characters, and there'll also be treasure and counter cards in here as well, among other things. So if we take this insert out, we should see some of the tiles underneath. Put that away, it's not very interesting to see. All right. Oops. Come on out of there. All right, here we go. So, again, uh, I don't really want to spoil anything by getting into these dungeon tiles because some of them have story specific locations on them. Um, so for those of you who prefer to be surprised by that kind of thing, I'll, I'll just leave it there. Um, besides going through screeds of tiles probably doesn't interest a lot of people. Um, I think what you're probably more interested in seeing is close-ups of the minis. So let's just cut to the chase and skip straight to the action. Okay, so this has been uh, Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage, the board game. This is I think the seventh game sixth game, sorry, in the Dungeons and Dragons Adventure System series. Started with Castle Ravenloft, um, followed up by Wrath of Ashardalon, and then the Legend of Dritzt, um, then Temple of Elemental Evil, uh, Tomb of Annihilation, of which I also have the premium edition on the shelf here, and finally Dungeon of the Mad Mage. So yeah, really excited. I think this is a really great way to get a lot of varied and fully painted miniatures for a collection. Um, some people believe that it's a bit overpriced, but I don't know, I, th I think for me, uh, I've weighed up the costs of booster packs uh, in which you have no idea what you're going to get, um, uh, opposed to the cost of buying a premium set with a series of miniatures you, you are sure of. Um, and yes, it's a bit disappointing that a couple of these had fallen off their bases, but not, nothing is actually broken, they've just fallen out because they haven't been glued in properly. Uh, so it's, it's easily remedied, I'm happy to do that. Um, but yeah, other than that, the, the quality of the minis and the paint jobs are absolutely amazing. So let's get into the close-ups now. Thanks guys. Hey guys, so thanks for joining me for this unboxing of Dungeons of the Mad Mage by Wizards of the Coast. I hope you got a great look at the miniatures. Uh, if not, I'll just play that part of the video again, I guess. I um, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, as I said at the beginning, this is sort of kicking off Season 2 of Above Board. So there's some great new games coming out this year which I plan to review. Uh, some of which are already on the board. Uh, the Sorry, did I say the board? The shelves, that's what those things are called, aren't they? Shelves behind me. These shelves. <sighs> should I edit this out or should I just leave this in? Leave it in. Alright, so I hope you enjoy it and we will see you for the next one. Thank you. Bye. Happy gaming. That's my, my little catchphrase. That's what I say when I say goodbye. Happy gaming. Like, who's not happy gaming? Are you happy gaming? <laughs>